All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a chat with Matt. Another episode. I got a couple coming this week. Today, I am joined by a band that I got I got sent last week by my friends over at LMS UK. Shout out jo- Josh Robinson's team over there, and I'm, I'm always down for some heavy tunes, and I'm very intrigued by by this group, and I'm very excited to learn more. And uh, so today. I got Joe and I got Rob of Bear Pit. Gentlemen, how are we doing? Hey, yeah, doing good, man. Doing good. How are you? Like I said before, just live in the dream as, as we all do. During this <laughs> I, was ho- I was hoping you'd say the exact same thing again. Just <laughs> Oh, I don't change my answers. I'll say the same shit on the Rob camera. It's in that case, every man, time. Yeah, in that case, we're also living the dream, man. We are living the dream over here, yeah. Yeah, so so tell me a bit about the band. How how did you guys get started? Because I was go- I, obviously I did a little backlog research on you, just trying to get an understanding. And it, you guys fairly new, or what? Or what's kind of the deal there? Uh, yes and no. So Bear Pit formed in uh, sort of mid to late 2014-15, originally. Uh, we brought out an EP. In 2017, Blacklist EP. Um, it, we were kind of we kind of formed. We were all going to the same sort of university together, so we went to BIM. It was a sort of music college here in the UK, uh, and we all sort of loved metal. Wanted to do a metal band, um, and basically throughout that transition of people sort of either staying at uni, going off to uni. Uh, you know, whatever people's situations were, uh, people ended up uh, uh, leaving. Um, so about a year or so later from that, uh, I chose to sort of get Bear Pit back uh, and get some new members in, jam some, jam some new members, bring a bit more life, well, some more fresh life into the band. Um, and that was me and Jose. Jose, our vocalist, uh, he joined us, did a few gigs with us, uh, and then we lost our bassist, drummer, and uh, other guitar player. <laughs> uh, but that didn't stop us at all. That did not stop us. Me and uh, me and Ripper, Jose Ripper, being his stage name, uh, very determined to sort of seek out some some more musicians in our sort of in our scene, if you like. Um, we weren't looking for the we weren't looking for the best people. We weren't looking for you know uh, uh, just eye candy for people. We were just looking for someone who wanted to actually play the songs, even if they couldn't play the songs or they didn't know the songs very well. They they had they had a passion and uh, ambition to to play this uh, play the music that we do and do it live and do it to the best of our ability. And uh, yeah, through a many ups and downs through the years <laughs> uh we are now here uh we released our first single as this current lineup uh, uh last year in september uh kind of had a feeling stuff was going to go down with this covid situation we did have a plan sort of set up really didn't we joe but it was we more we really just wanted to go yeah. out and just just do something so we had something new to release something new to show people and say this is this is us you know now we're back we're uh we're wanting to uh come back play some more music write some more music for you guys but it's this is us this is new you know it's not the people you knew before might be one or two people you recognize but this is the band now so we really wanted to get that out there and just see how it went and since september you know with that single uh you know, I feel really, really proud of what we've done and what we've achieved, the people that we've spoken to and met and, uh, you know, basically collaborate, almost collaborated with, with certain things as well uh, through that, through doing that video and uh, doing that song and getting it done when we did, because we were umming and ahhing about it for a while, because we wanted to, uh, you know, release it, go and gig it, <laughs> if we could, uh, actually get it out there and, be, a, be an active band, uh, which I feel is probably the best way to, to do things. Uh, if you want to get out there and get your name run out there with, you know, Spotify being very much for Notion, uh, you can release your music and do everything you, you know, 
you can you can tick the right sort of boxes and stuff and release your music, but to actually uh, get people's attention, you, you you know need to go out there, get out of mm. this bubble, you know. And unfortunately, we've been in this bubble for a little while. So now that hopefully when things get back to normal, we do have big plans to to get out there and yeah. and uh, show everyone what well, what we've been doing for the past year or so. Because yeah. I mean, especially since. Um... Well, I, I joined the band in early 2019, so just, just over two years now, because I joined through my friend Sam, who Rob knew from a little bit beforehand, but I've been friends with Sam for years and years, so like, we were playing in bands together when we were still in, like, sorry, yeah, sorry, just and stuff. Sorry, just to backtrack, before, sorry to interrupt you, Joe. So Sam, mm-hmm. um, I was we were looking for another guitarist, and Sam was yeah one of the first guitarists that mainly got in touch and basically gave me a mini resume saying I, I do this I've done this in the past I can't do this but wanted to do that he he showed genuine interest so we met up at Macmillan Fest mm-hmm. I believe in Bristol which was a sort of a charity event with bands uh, like an all-day event met up there discussed had a chat looked like you know things were going well so I said to him you know come and come and you know play for Bear Pit and see how it goes and he mentioned that he knew someone who could drum because we were still looking for a drummer I knew some drummers but we wanted a reliable drummer someone who but also someone who <laughs> could want to I don't know about that in. I really don't know about that Rob <laughs> <laughs> to date that's, the that's, most that's reliable like drummer joke, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> to date probably the most uh, yeah most, most committed most de- dedicated and uh, actually yeah, is, is, is current in the conversation of the band, you know, whereas it's difficult if someone's there and just hanging in the background, you don't really know, you know, what they think, what they want to do. But Joe, for example, uh, as a drummer, uh, this being his first band, I believe that he's yeah actually so, writing and playing drums for, yeah? Yeah. So, I mean, like before, before this, I'd only actually played bass in bands because uh, I always like, used to love Red Hot Chili Peppers and I wanted to be Flea so bad. <laughs> I think everyone who's that age, like I started playing when I was like 30, and everyone that age just wants to be Flea. So yeah. Um, yeah, I tried that for a few years and then, um, yeah, I just, I kind of started to transition to drums a bit more. And then, yeah, like I said, Sam came to me saying that I know, um, well, I'd actually been bugging Sam for months and months. Like, can you get me in a band? Can you get me in a band? Can you get me in a band? Because I, I didn't want to go. I was too nervous to go out and try and try out for drums in bands myself. And then, yeah, he introduced me to Rob Ripper. We met up in, must have been yeah. February 2019, was it? It was I remember definitely it was, snowing. I remember it was snowing because there's that um, there's the first photo we took and it's uh, it looks really, really cute because it looks like we're in a grotto or something. <laughs> Um, but I yeah, love the word cute. We, um, what a good description. It was a cute, <laughs> it was a cute. <laughs> well, bear, photo. Bears are cute, so we got to like. Rah. 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 <laughs> I just had some ideas for branding for you. <laughs> Rar, <laughs> Rar. Rar. XD. No, it's 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 but it's then, wonderful yeah, from, to hear. Sorry. How th- no, please continue. If you have more, go. No, no, no. I was, I was sorry. I think the delays a little bit. Sorry, you keep going. <laughs> yeah, no worries. No, it, it, it's good to hear the story because that's the thing with a lot of these bands is there. there is usually for a good amount of bands in the earlier phases, there is a lot of changes in development, either from member changes or mm-hmm. genre changes or different classifications like that. And so it's good to hear the full spectrum of kind of what happened and seeing the first single that's out now and seeing the video and just seeing the dynamic of the band and seeing how it's, it's come out a nice clean polished product but there was a lot of back-end work that you guys were building onto it and obviously launching it shit kind of hit the fan with the pandemic how how has that affected what you guys are doing now and how have you guys like adjusted in terms of your strategy and like either marketing or just online development like what kind of stuff have you guys been up to to deal with this scenario well, I could say a lot on this. So, I mean, what, what about you, Joe? Do you want to speak first on this? <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, the, the first thing I think that every musician would say is missing gigging. I think that's the one thing that really stands out is that's what mm-hmm. we want to be doing. Rehearsals that's, and gigs, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, of course, rehearsals as well, because, I mean, I absolutely love stepping on all your pedals and annoying you guys <laughs> on guitar. So it's, it's, just, gigging, it's gigging that makes the band better, yeah, you know. Uh, the exactly. more the band gigs, the better they'll get, you know. Yeah. And uh, not having, not being able to have the opportunity to even rehearse or to go out and perform in front of an audience uh, has been sort of a little bit strange because it's almost like, where's the end goal here like we're we just kind of plodding along a little bit kind of doing feeling like we're doing all the right things in the right places but it's just been such an up and down year for well for everyone but for this band in particular everyone individually has had so much stuff going on uh so communication i think over the past year or so has improved communication, obviously being a very big thing within a band. Um, yeah. We still have a lot to learn, still have a lot to improve on, but the, like the, how far we've actually come, I, I think uh, since that early 2019, Joe, you know, it's, uh, it's a bit nuts. Uh, and like I said, we really, we, we've, I mean, Ashes is, <sighs> Ashes consists of really the first kind of ideas, the first kind of vibe that came about when we started jamming together. Uh, so with that in mind, that that came about early 2019. So that song's getting quite old now, even though we we released it in September, and st- but we haven't gigged it that much. And with this current lineup, we haven't been able to gig that much either because no. it was all leading up to this release and then COVID. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so everything was just like, well, we can't do anything, you know, it's, it's no point. Um, so not being able to go out and gig uh, and have those, those regular sort of uh, rehearsals together and just being able to check up on each other and make sure that everyone's kind of knows what they're doing or at least so that people can be held responsible or held kind of accountable for their part of what they're doing for the band even though we can't go out and gig or anything like that or go and rehearse you know just because we can't do that doesn't mean we can't do these other things it just means we need to put our heads together and actually do some some work instead of uh instead of us playing the songs and practicing the songs and I don't know, dicking around and <laughs> having a laugh because that's that's part of what it is about as well is having a laugh and having fun with your friends and playing music. But you know, when that element's kind of taken away from you, it makes a, a very stressful, demanding job even more so. I think. And, and and I think that's the interesting thing with the pandemic because and people who've listened to this podcast before know what i'm about to say because it's kind of a recycled thing but it it is true it's more of that the pandemic was a blessing and a curse obviously a curse because in the genre you guys are in and many bands and rock bands metal bands whatever it is the biggest thing to break those bands to a wider audience is touring yeah spotify is very important online games is very important but that physical face-to-face person-to-person interaction is so crucial when developing a fan base. But the issue is now you guys can't do that. So the blessing is, and you mentioned it beautifully, it was the fact that you guys are now kind of taking a step in, looking internally, building communication, building online strategy, building new strategy, building an infrastructure, because a huge thing that young bands and for any young bands listening, this is wonderful for you to know when bigger companies, either management, uh, booking agencies, record labels, whatever it is, the biggest thing they look for is a team of people internally that just want to push and get the job done. And you need to build an infrastructure in order to do that. So by taking the time now, which is the blessing part of it, to actually build an infrastructure internally, work on the things you want to work on and have the time to plan, you could create a fuck ton of content. You can develop your online persona using Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok is huge right now. Like there's so many amazing opportunities to develop your online brand. And then when you can carry that out and go do live, you could potentially expose yourself to a bigger audience than you would have if the pandemic's been normal because, and I'm sure you've seen this and you're seeing, because I think it's kind of just a thing that people see in scenes in general. It's that stereotypical kind of 
okay, we're going to post on Facebook. Doors are at seven. We're on at eight. Okay, see so you. Yeah, man. But where's, where's the personal touch, though? You need to exactly. have... By going out and touring and going out and gigging, it's like, yeah, you, you're up there for half hour, 40 minutes, maybe playing your music. But the rest of the night, the rest of the time, between loading your stuff in, loading your stuff out, you know, mm. it's an opportunity to meet people and talk to people. And if there are people that mm. are digging your band or people that dig, you know, have come down to see your band, that's the opportunity to have that one-on-one with them and make that personal sort of connection with them. They'll remember that. Whereas, you know, now with the past year or so, we've had to just rely on, you know, just sending them a message like, you know, here's the music video, here's all our links, here's everything, you know, it'd be amazing if you could check us out, you know, or, you know, share for share, like for like, um, try to get on playlists, et cetera, et cetera. If it, it's, it's a necessary evil, I think, but where's the personal touch? That's not going to get, without that personal touch, without, you know, mm. showing that audience, your audience, you know, what you're about really, it's very it's, it's it's difficult to connect and to get traction and and build uh, without gigging. Yeah, and just to kind of segue onto that, it's the the best way I can describe that and what you said is personal, and that's a big thing I push across everything I do. Authenticity works. Mm-hmm. Authenticity yes. connects, and the, and a basic economics and psychology lesson is that I push to everyone is when you are trying to sell someone something. They're more likely to buy something from you if they know you and like you as opposed to immediately trying to sell something off the bat. And that's why developing an online persona, talking to people at those gigs, putting your personal touch into the content you create and the personal engagement you have with people, it allows people to get to know you and want to connect with you. And then when you have those connections, they're more inclined to stream your song, pre-save your song, share your video, like your video, buy tickets, buy exactly. merch, and yeah. eventually yeah. it turns into an actual monetary conversion. I mean, that's why when LMS kind of got in touch with us, we thought it'd be a good mm-hmm. idea to at least try and work with them for a little bit on our social media presence. Yeah. Um, because even though we're doing it ourselves, and we would sort of, you know, uh, give that one person or those two people that job. Um, is the consistency and is trying to, again, trying to engage your audience. But hmm. when you've only gigged together, yeah, the band's been about, there's an EP there. You know, there's a vibe going. We know kind of what we want to go with musically. But with at this point in time, only rehearsed fully as a, as a group a handful of times gigs you know less than a handful of times it's very uh, again difficult to sort of say to people this is us this is what we're about this is our personality this is you know what we want to this is what we're trying to do with our music or something like that that's just an example um trying to do that through just purely online it's very difficult because attention span if you're trying to put stuff on stories, you know, you see all these big artists and they're putting everything on stories. They'll put, you know, 50 to a hundred stories a day uh, mm-hmm. purposely because they know when people are flicking through those stories, it's just flick, 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 next, 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 next. Cause they're just, con- it's just consuming all this, you know, data basically. Who has the, the time, time for that? No, no one, time? no one, no one anymore. <laughs> hey, this I is must- my point. <laughs> no one does anymore like there's very the very few of my friends that i still that i have now that actually sit down and listen to albums now you know they, they won't sit down and listen to an album uh willy nilly you know whereas i i love doing that but it's the when it comes to music and when you're just sort of being bombarded with content all the time you know uh, it can either be music or it could be art or it could be anything visual or anything even if it's something like a clothing brand something like that people just you know all the time trying to sell you stuff they're trying to sell you stuff whether it's you know clothes or their music and it's not that necessarily people aren't interested it's just it's become increasingly harder i think to get that get their attention get people's attention you need to be doing something really uh really wild to get that 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 traction going and to keep it going uh um, which we, we have plans to do, but uh, <laughs> when we get back, when we get back to it, um, mm-hmm. to our rehearsals again, when we have full rehearsals, 
we'll know we'll know we'll know the school we'll know what's going on and and joe how's this all been kind of affecting your role in the band and what you've been doing and everything like that yeah so i mean it's 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 been interesting because before the pandemic i think what i realized since then sorry is how much i kind of didn't know about (laughs) <laughs> about what maybe I, I could do and maybe stuff I just hadn't really tried. I mean, um, I mean, I, I obviously I, I knew kind of had a drum before, when I came into this band, I like to think, but um, so that's not been a problem. But some of the things that I've, I've learned, I've had to learn just because we've not been doing things in person. So because we can't obviously write in person, learning new stuff on say drum programming, which I've been able to teach myself Um a few other things as well just the social media side as well like lms uk being able to work with them has actually been really useful for us because i like rob said earlier it's about that consistency online it's about getting that personal touch and that little something different that you can offer to the world because obviously you're competing with so many things as rob said it's Mm. it's obviously a nightmare online to be seen amongst the crowd and i think that's that for me is what I'd say I learned same sort of things is just trying new things and trying to learn new ways to be able to exist really in the environment and and then thrive essentially I think it has opened all of our eyes I hope you know uh, to what we actually can be doing and what we should be doing Uh, because it's not just turning up and playing music and remembering your parts and practicing your parts it's uh I mean, if you want to be taking, I mean, go out and play music. Anyone can go out and play music and enjoy it and have a good time. That's great if that's what you want to do. But if you want to be doing it and trying to, you know, get some sort of traction and getting bigger with either yourself as an artist or with the, with the band. Um, oh, what was I going to fucking say? No, I, I, I get exactly what was I saying. I what was I saying, Joe? A business, that's it. That's exactly what I was going to say. So these days... Check your notes. (laughs) Check your notes, Joe. There you go. Um, It's like, essentially, you kind of have to treat treat it like a business, almost. Um, Like a a clothing brand or something like that. Like Mm. uh, giving people just some some sort of content, something to look for. Like we've got got these ideas for merch. We've got merch basically nailed down now. But Mm. we haven't gone ahead and done it because we want to have everything else ready first so when everything drops we can drop that but then we can drop the next and then we can drop the next so to have that consistency to have that uh, mm. timing is really important and i think throughout this last well since this this band's re- rejoined and rebranded and everything since 2019 we've we've had to learn a lot about that mm. uh because whatever headway we made as a I mean, we made as a band in 2017, 18, that was basically, you know, nil. It was like starting fresh again, which was fine. Mm. But, you know, it doesn't make it any easier. <laughs> no.
No, and I and I get exactly where you're coming from on that because with with the pandemic, this and like you said, a lot of people have realized what needs to get done in order to evolve. The music industry has a notorious history, and I'm sure you're aware of this over over there. It's the the industry has always been behind whether it's yes. social media technique, online engagement, whatever it is, they're always, you can look back through history. They're always behind the times, if, especially relates to technology and what's going on going forward. The industry, because everyone was locked in and traditional forms of revenue earning were shut down, like live shows and, and in-person merch sales and all those kinds of aspects, it's forced people to have to reevaluate their approach in how to engage in a business. And building Mm -hmm. something from the ground up, which now has to include an online base because you need that in order to succeed in this business. And the people and the bands that, and and this is saying that I've said a few times, I'm going to continue saying it because it's honestly probably one of the most important things I think people need to hear. It's if you don't evolve, you fall behind. And especially Mm -hmm. in the time right now when live shows are starting to come back and people can actually go out and start touring again there's going to be two groups of artists there's going to be the artists that go back to doing what they were doing before kind of following the same path getting away with just posting Mm -hmm. my shows at eight come by versus the bands that are like okay consistency and content consistency and pushes consistency and drops consistency and touring if you have those consistency it's all going you're going to secure a wider fan base both online and in person as well as you're going to expand your brand beyond what you could originally do in both na- both local uh national international markets so mm-hmm. i i completely understand where you guys are coming from and i truly commend you on that and like i, I love the first single uh i'm gonna play it at some point in this episode i may have already played it i may have not already played because i'm just gonna slice it in somewhere but the song is great. It has a lot of potential. I'm very curious to see what you guys are going to do, especially when you can start doing live stuff. Mm. And it's good to see. We're that excited. We're really, pumped. <laughs> it's good to see that you guys are really focusing on that online development and just working on making sure you have a tight ship because it, it is a business. And if you want to be a long-term successful band, you're You have to approach it with a somewhat business attitude. It's about the art through and through. And at the end of the day, the song is what's going to sell. But you do have to keep in mind that in order, if you want to do it for a career, you're going to have to think, okay, how can I make this last? I need money in order to make this last because I kind of need to buy things like food and rent. Exactly, and, yeah. And the other expenses. And these are things that I, I had in mind way, way earlier on before even considering uh, sort of getting this back up together again. Um, was literally... Uh, just having that attitude towards that. All right, I've got a fly stuck on my fucking. <laughs> it's pissing me off, Robert. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. No worries. What so was I saying? How... What were you saying before? Sorry. What did you say before? Oh, I no, wanted to comment about... on that. Yeah, I know. I was just talking about how the importance of running a business, but I'm also curious how how has the culture been music scene wise over there because like i know for the canadian side things the music scene has been kind of it was that kind of like a plateau for a few years like people were getting Mm -hmm. by artists like there weren't as many artists breaking out like canada has some massive exports but in terms of like more of a local level from that local to hitting that breaking point how has kind of the culture been over there in terms of like the live shows in terms of the artists that are coming out like what what are some of your thoughts on the culture over there right now well the, the music culture over here in the, in the scene you mean yeah well yeah um a lot of great bands actually i've yeah. discovered this past year um which i you know i had no idea i didn't hear before um a lot of great yeah. arts been coming out um as far as with our scene i suppose in the uk it's really hard to say the past. I mean, thinking back to going and being at a live show or watching a band, it feels so alien right now. Um, so as far as I, I hope that live music is going to thrive again, I'm sure it will, um, you know, very soon. But I think there's a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of built, built up frustration from people and that is creating uh, really, really good art. 
Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, you can make really, really good art. But if you're say you're you're making this art with you know three, four, five other people, uh, and trying to release it as a band, and going back to looking at a band as like a business these days, they these guys are also your business partners. So you want to make sure that they're not just your friends or they're not just the people you play music with. You need to trust them as if they were your business partner and trust them on, you know, their ideas, their, uh, what they think is right, what we think is wrong and building that relationship as a band, I think, because having that frustration of being a part, uh, we are a Bristol based band. Uh, mm. I'm, I live in Gloucestershire, uh, so that's about 40, 45 minutes, maybe to an hour from Bristol. Uh, Joe, you study in Liverpool and you're kind of between Liverpool, Plymouth and Bristol. Ripper, Dale and Sam are in Bristol. So that, that frustration of not quite being able to get all together at the same time and communicate in person has kind of had to, it's forced us to have to communicate like better online and get our points across uh get our plans across to one another make sure that people and everyone's under, on the same page and understands one another mm. uh, and that's very important i think for an up and coming band as much as it would be great that we could have gone out and gigged a lot this year uh and possibly if you know gotten more recorded music uh i think you know because of all this our communication and our actual relationship as a band has become a lot stronger so going forward and working together, I feel will be, you know, like I said, I'm I'm very pumped for it, very excited for, for the new yeah. new stuff that we're working on. It's gonna be good. Definitely. Uh, uh, what do you think is gonna be? Because something I've been theorizing a bit, and I think this is gonna carry over in a variety of different markets. It's a concept of kind of like a live renaissance, in which, like, I'm comparing it to attendance at shows before on a local level like the local support either the shows are doing well or they're kind of doing okay versus mm. after when people can actually go out and do shows again like obviously there's a large percentage of people or a good percentage of people that just want to go out to shows and i think there's going to be a period of time where live shows on all levels are just mm. going to get a bigger push in terms of attendance and i'm very curious do you guys think that's going to be something similar over your way or is is the population kind of like more just wanting to be safe or is there like that craving of for fuck's sakes let me go to a show <laughs> it's all three oh. man it's all three it's all very uh you're all up here in your head and you're just like i don't know what to do so mm. they'll probably just end up staying home and watching netflix <laughs> and going oh I, I could have got to watch that band never mind mm. <laughs> yeah i i for sure i'm i'm absolutely gunning to go back to shows i'm i'm so looking forward to it and i know so many people that are as well whether or not once i, I mean i'm i'm not sure at the moment really at what point i'd be comfortable going back to shows i mean at the moment definitely not obviously the regulation well the kind of restrictions in england at the moment everything's still outside um, stuff should be going inside again sort of mid-May so we're hoping it's all very vague isn't it it's all very, very vague. I mean as far as attending shows and stuff <laughs> yeah. like that no one knows what the hell to expect no but uh, obviously we're very excited for that and I know I know plenty of people that again as soon as they find out a good show will be on I mean I'm pretty sure that um, there was a show in Bristol where it's um, every time I die that or that that's for when it, I think it's in mid 2022 and that's already sold out. Mm, so I, yeah. I think that gives an idea of how many people <laughs> are really looking forward to shows. And that's at, that's at SWX, I think, in Bristol, which is probably one of our bigger-ish venues. I mean, the Bristol it's music, now, yeah. the Bristol venues, I'm looking forward to getting back to Exchange, Fleece, shout out to all those guys, Louisiana, uh, Thecla. I mean the list goes on of the amount of places I've missed going to for shows and missing live music. So yeah, it's, I think I personally am really looking forward to it. And I think sh talking to people, I think everyone else really is looking forward to getting back. And it's just, 
yeah when I when think, that I is think, really i think there's going to be there is going to be an anxiety about it for a while yeah with, for sure. with everyone but the, if you love music you know you, you'll go to a show if, you, if it's yeah. if it's possible and if it's if it's yeah. going ahead and it's safe and you're making sure that you're staying safe and you know other people mm. around you they, they'll 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 find any excuse to go to a show yeah. you know if it, if it were me you know yeah 100%. Um, because I think the music industry in this country has been because of obvious because of the panda. I know we keep having to bring it up, but because of that, the music the industry P word. Has, ugh, it's just been completely destroyed. And um I think everyone wants to be able to help out artists here because they they're the ones who've really suffered during this. So that's I'd I'd like to think that people will come together and chuck a bit of money at the music industry because we we fucking yeah. need <laughs> well, especially for the the local bands and the smaller bands, you know, that are still going, because mm. you know there's been a lot of bands, smaller bands that are, are still going now, but a lot of bands that have just they folded, you know, and just decided it's it's not worth it because it's mm. it it is an uphill struggle, it is a battle, and you have to constantly, as you as you were saying earlier, kind of evolve and adapt um, to what's going on around you socially and economically, so. It's not for everyone. It's if you know, is it's it's you know, pre it can get pretty disheartening over the past year. But you know, the, just because we want, we know that live music will come again. It will be there again because we know that's going to happen. We keep working and we just want to be as ready as and as we can for when we go back out there. So for people who don't play in a band and just love the music, I don't see why they they couldn't just go and pay a fiver to go see a night of local bands. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, it's all very well paying, you know, 30 to 40 quid going to see, us, you know, go to arena or stadium with, you know, 30,000, 20,000 people, or whatever. That's cheap. But <laughs> Yeah, really? <laughs> I mean, like a hundred quid, mate, at least. Hey, mate, I'm not the accountant. You're the accountant over there. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I, you know what I mean? It's like, don't go, don't go and support the, the small local bands are still going yeah. man because you have no idea how how tough it's been for for them and uh and all they want to do is just play play their music for you and uh mm -hmm. they want you to have a good time from it you know uh that's all they want to do they want to yeah just bring music to bring good music to you that's all they want yeah. so go go and support them because unfortunately yeah. if 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 that doesn't happen you know and you know bands just can't survive otherwise yeah. Um, every band yeah. is what's a local band so yeah yeah and that's that's the aspect of it that a lot of people don't realize it's so many bands have kind of fell through because of this and whether it's because time constrictions covid restrictions financial constrictions whatever it is and it's so true that the development aspect for young bands is so tough right now because the stuff you do to break most of that's gone and now it's kind of just that evolve period or you kind of have to do other stuff and that and that's why it's so great to see people starting to create online content and like just trying to put themselves out there in different ways to connect with the audience that they can't actually interact with face to face i mean on the artistic standpoint though on a more positive aspect mm. some of the music that's going to come out once people are ready to start touring again it's going to be fucking gnarly. There's going to be some sick ass yeah. music Sorry, coming out. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's already a lot, a massive, massive amount. I mean, we've got a, we've got our own Spotify playlist and, and the amount of bands we've added recently that we've, yeah. we've never heard of before. And, mm. uh, you know, we've just heard on a stream or whatever. Yeah. Or just found, just found randomly on Facebook. You know, it's really a lot of talent out there and, and a lot so of bands, much. a lot yeah. of bands that really want it and they, they really want to push for it, but that, you know, they're struggling people we're all struggling it's uh yeah so to, you know we've got to help each other out i think you know everyone's everyone is in this together in a sense you know and it's help each other out everyone wants the same thing everyone just wants to get out there play music for people you know sell some tickets make some people you know happy uh sell sell some t-shirts so you know hopefully sell some music but <laughs> That's uh, you're not going to make much from that these days. So you know, t-shirts mainly. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I have no idea what live show is going to look like. You know, people are thinking. You know, maybe they'll bring out the zorbs, absorbing when you're like a, <laughs> a massive bubble. And 
you're just gonna have to go to the bar get a drink and just you know, the mosh pits will be fun how are you gonna hold your drink yeah, like, <laughs> well, listen, drinks go flying anyway what's the difference yeah. it's because just you're in a little away. bubble yeah it would go flying away from you but you're in a bubble and it's just going to go up and in your face or all over you know just open and your mouth and then you're going to go and want to like push the other person but you realize you're in your own bubble so you just push yourself over and you, yeah it just all goes wrong just look like a bunch of drunk toddlers it's going to be great in bubbles. that's normal be fair <laughs> exactly just throw around <laughs> passion into each other oh, man, that's so great all right, guys, as much as I'd love to keep chatting with you, I do have to wrap this up. I really want to thank you guys for coming to hang okay. out with me okay. for a bit. This is a cool conversation. Uh, where yeah, man, I really enjoyed it. The band? Where can people find the band and what you guys are doing right now? Uh, you can find the band at Bear Pit UK. That's all our socials, so Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I believe we, uh, we do have a TikTok, don't we, Joe? But there'll be more to come oh. on that soon. <laughs> yes, we, we haven't... Um, well. <laughs> We, we're keeping that on the down low a little bit at the moment. So uh, maybe. Are, are you, is, Joe practice, <laughs> is Joe practicing the dances? I'm assuming he's going to do the dances. No comment. All of them. Joe's doing all of them. He's going to be a <laughs> <Okay>. star. <laughs> I got all the right, hips yeah. for it, apparently. So <laughs> there you go. Well, hips don't lie. Uh, all of Bear Pit's links are going to be in the description down below if you're watching this on YouTube or listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you are consuming this show. Thank you to Bear Pit. I got one more episode coming out tomorrow. And uh, that's about it. So I will see you guys in the next episode. Take it easy. Peace.